Hello, I'm Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and OnlineFirstAid.com. Going to go through first aid for choking and also to outline some of the most common foodstuffs and other objects that children choke on commonly and um, how to help. So why are some foodstuffs worse than others? Well, a lot of it's on their size and on how hard it is um, and how squishy it is and the shape of whatever they have eaten. For example, we've all heard about grapes being a choking hazard. If you see this going down your child's airway, you can see how easily it can get stuck. So please, when you're chopping up carrots and things, instead of chopping them in nice little neat circles, batons will be safer. Uh, yes, obviously encourage them to chew their food and everything, but cherry tomatoes and grapes, if they're not cut in half, um, can form quite a nasty choking hazard. Likewise, these little mini eggs, so these sort of things, they have, as a warning on the packet, on the back, they have warning choking hazards unsuitable for children under four years old. Now, children of any age can choke on them, but obviously littler ones are less likely to be chewing them and be more careful. But again, if you have a look, that is the perfect size to get beautifully lodged down and get stuck in your child's airway, which can mean that they can't breathe. Um, the thing with this sort of shape as well is they're much harder for someone to, to have to get out if your back blows and Heimlich maneuver um, don't work. So children and adults can choke on absolutely anything if it goes down the way and get down the wrong way and gets stuck and blocks your airway. So absolutely anything small enough to fit through a loo roll holder um, can um, uh, through a loo roll can can actually block um, an airway. But the key is to avoid those lovely round circular things um, to make sure that your child is supervised at all time when they're eating. And if there is something that is a perfect circle, try and avoid it being a perfect circle. So if it does get stuck, there's still a chance that air will be able to get through. So things like toys as well, all the little things, it's usually the second child because the older child is now playing with all the fiddlier things. And then the, child, the younger child gets hold of smaller objects that they can pop in their mouth and can cause a choking hazard. Be particularly careful with button batteries. They're not just a choking hazard. If they do get lodged, they will burn and they can prove fatal. So particularly careful with those sort of batteries that are in key fobs, in cards, um, in um, a lot of children's toys as well. And just make sure that if that battery is missing that you take your child for an x-ray straight away. Do not wait and see if it comes out the other end because that may well be too late. I've done a separate Facebook Live all about button batteries and what happens and why they are dangerous. So please have a look at that if you're interested. Right, if your child is choking, if they are coughing, then it is not life-threatening choking, and hopefully they will be able to clear it themselves. So obviously a bit of um, help putting them head down can help them to, to cough it up and encourage them to cough it up themselves. If it's quite obviously stuck and your child is silent and in distress, um, then have a look in their mouth, have a look down, See if there is anything obvious. If there is obvious, something obvious, take it out with your finger and thumb. Do not finger sweep round because you can cause trauma and make things worse. If there's nothing obvious, put your hand on their chest, lean them forward. This is not the right angle to be showing you because obviously they would be across my lap with their head down, but I cannot do a Facebook Live and show you that at the same time. So imagine that they're across my lap or they're leaning forward. Um, like this with me sort of kneeling down beside them and hit them between the shoulder blades hard. So support them on their chest, lean them forward and see if anything has come out. Up to five times. Okay. So what you're going to do is make a fist 
Um, obviously get an ambulance on the way um, if somebody hasn't been calling someone um, before then. You make a fist like this and you put the fist between the bottom of the rib cage and their tummy button. So here like this and you lean them forward. Again, not easy to show you on a Facebook Live, but you lean them forward like that and you put your other hand over the top and you pull in and up. So in a J-shaped movement, in and up, and the obstruction should come shooting out. So three times, four times, five times, still hasn't come out, I'm checking each time. Then I would go back to the back blows. You keep checking, so up to five, 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 five. Make sure the emergency services are on their way. If the child starts going floppy and losing consciousness, you would need to start CPR. Now, you would never do um, the Heimlich maneuver or the abdominal thrust um, on, a on a baby or a child under one. So for a baby, um, just as I was saying before, so you would start by looking to see if there's anything obvious and removing it with your finger and thumb. If not, you put your finger and thumb underneath their jaw to support their head in the neutral position. You hold them down like this and you would hold them down over your arm and ideally over your leg. Again, it's very difficult to show you um, during a Facebook Live, but I don't know if you can see that. That baby looks enormous from this angle, but holding like that and hitting firmly like that and checking each time, okay? two, three, four. And if it hasn't come out on those five back blows, my second line treatment for a baby, if I show you at this angle, is have them down over your arm, supporting your, their head with your hand, down your leg, and two fingers between the nipples on the chest, so a chest thrust, upward thrust and check, upward thrust, check, upward thrust, check, up to five times, and then you would put your hand here, turn them over again, and do your five back blows, and keep going. And if they start going floppy, and stop breathing um, completely, then you need to start CPR, and you keep going. Um, and make sure that the ambulance service knows how serious it is. Now, I hope that's helpful. Please keep everything out of, out of reach of very little children. Don't chop things up into perfect circles and um, stay safe. That's Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com.